Hello, and welcome to the Knit and Grace podcast. Let's talk about scrappy spring projects. Welcome back if you're a returning viewer. If you are new here, my name is Mia and I am the maker behind it in Grace. And today I wanted to bring you a little bit of a fun spring video that I literally just thought of this morning <laughs> because y'all were just going to get a vlog for the second video of the month if we're completely honest. But um, as I've been making and as I've been sort of organizing my plans for the next couple of months, I thought of this fun video concept for you all that I thought might be a welcome because I know that a lot of you, like me, are trying to reduce some of your yarn spending this year. And then also we're always just trying to figure out ways to use up our stash yarn, right? And that's kind of the theme that is carrying through a lot of my videos this year. So um, I kind of thought of this because I had mentioned um, sort of using your yarn scraps in color work last um, in last podcast. And also I was planning out my next cardigan for the year of the cardigan make along. And so kind of like a lot of different things came together to kind of come up with this idea. And so with this video, I guess I'm going to call it the three things you need to make this spring, the scrappy edition. So if you have been around for a while, you know that sometimes I do put out these kind of like seasonal videos of what to make in the upcoming season or what I plan on making in the upcoming season. And last spring, I actually put out a video for you all, the three things you need to knit this spring, which I will link in the cards up above and also in the uh, description box. So I thought that I would kind of come at you with a part two and this time we're going to make it scrappy because that is kind of the theme of the year. So um, similar to the last video, if you had seen that one last year, I'm going to talk about three categories of items that um, we all can make this spring. And then I'm going to share with you the three items that fall into the category. So one each um, that fall into the categories that I will be working on this coming spring. So you can look out for the finished objects in some upcoming podcast episodes. So um, I think that is a very long intro and I will say that um, I did create a Ravelry bundle for all of these projects so that you all can visit that bundle and see all the projects instead of me um, individually linking to all of the projects. And if it is a project that I myself am making, I will link you to my project page for that. So that is is where you might see some additional links in the description down below. But for the actual pattern pages, I will have a bundle ready for you. And like always, I'm going to pull up 
all of these projects in my Rabbit app on my phone so that we can follow along with each other. Okay, so the first category of items that I think that we can make scrappily this spring are striped and colorwork cardigans. So you, we all know like spring is very transitional weather. Some days can be warm, some days can be cold, some days can start out cold and end warm, some days can start out warm and end cold. There is just a whole host of seasons that take place in one day if you are lucky, like myself, to live in an area with proper spring weather. And so, um, you know, cardigans are a big theme in my podcast this year. I'm finally making the cardigans. Um, as you all know, I'm also participating in my friend Cece's year of the cardigan make along that she is hosting over on Instagram. So of course, I needed to start out this video with some cardigan patterns that are perfect for spring. And so um, I'm going to bring you five cardigan patterns uh, that we that I think are perfect for spring. So these are lighter weight Weight, so fingering weight, DK weight patterns, um, and the theme is to make them scrappy. So that's why they're either striped or color work. So the um, entire cardigan won't be able to be scrappy, unfortunately, but this is a great way for you to use up some of those little ends and bits and pieces that you might have in your stash um, as a way to incorporate them into a larger project that you you might have a larger sweaters quantities worth of yarn for. And so the first cardigan that I'm going to start out with is the cardigan that I am wearing. I'm sure you all were wondering when I was going to talk about what I was wearing today. And that is the Straya by Andrea Mowry. And so before I get into the cardigan itself, I'll go ahead and insert some pictures of mine worn here. And I will tell you exactly how I made mine scrappy. So for my cardigan, I used a woolly knit four ply British wool cone that I had in my stash. Um, I forget the color of the, um, <laughs> the cone, but what I chose to do and the reason why I had this idea to make the Straya cardigan specifically is I had tons of leftover linen quill in my stash that I ended up using for the stripes on my cardigan. And so that is how I made this one scrappy. I had purchased one each of each of these colors of linen quill that I incorporated into a different project. And I still had pretty hefty amounts of all of the colors left. And I wanted to go ahead and utilize them in the cardigan. And so the colors that I had, just looking at my wrist here so that I can see my colors, the blue that I used is Stillwater Blue. The pink is Peony Pink. The yellow is turmeric yellow and the red is kiln red. And so this was a perfect way for me to use up some of the scraps that were left over in my stash for a larger project so that I can also kind of like extend the usage of my sweater's quantity worth of yarn. So to tell you a little bit about this pattern, I'm pulling it up here on my Rabbit app so that will be here for you all. Um, again, this is a striped uh, car cardigan and here you can see Andrea Mowry's version. And my version is, is pretty similar, although I think that she used a gray base and my yarn is um, a beige base for her cardigan. So scrolling down, it is a, it's cost nine US dollars and it is knit up in fingering weight yarn in Fisherman's Rib. So, and it is um, knit on US two needles, which are the needles that I used for mine as well. Uh, it is, uh, there are 10 sizes available, I should say. And if we expand our description here, um, let's see, it looks like there was a virtual 
knit along that went along with the cardigan. But essentially, uh, it's just an easy to wear, very squishy cardigan that is striped, knit again in Fisherman's Rib, 10 sizes available for finished bust circumference of 34.75 inches all the way up to 61 inches. And it is recommended to be worn with uh, between two inches of negative ease all the way up to four inches of positive ease. I completed the, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, fifth size, which is the 46, four zero inches of ease on mine. And I absolutely love how mine turned out. So um, another great, or I guess I should say the first great pattern for a striped cardigan for the spring. So the next cardigan that I have to share with you all is the Porty cardigan by Gudrun Johnston. And this is the cardigan version of the Porty jumper, I believe, or Porty pullover that she published. And this is another great way for you to use some of your scrap fingering weight yarn is in color work. And so pulling up the cardigan, it is just a really simple cardigan. I love that it has, um, you know, just very simple color work, but it has very few details with the just the three buttons in the front. So it can still be very airy. Or it's four buttons, excuse me. Um, it looks like it has an I-cord edging. Um, and yeah, it's just a really stunning cardigan that I think would use up some of your scraps really well. And so scrolling down, it is in eight US dollars for the pattern. And again, it is knit in fingering weight with a gauge of 27 stitches. And it is knit on US four needles. So it looks like there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 sizes available. So from 35 and a quarter all the way to 58 and three quarters or yep, inches. And so here we have it. So the cardigan is worked in one piece from the top down with a circular yoke. The sleeves and body are separated at the underarm. There are short rows. The color work is charted for both the yoke and the cuffs. And then you steek the cardigan. So this is another one where it's great because it's color work, but you don't have to knit it flat. And uh, you get to steek. And if you haven't steeked before, you know, it's not as scary as it sounds, I promise. <laughs> but you'll get another um, kind of tool in your toolkit. So again, it's from 35, uh, about a 35 inch bust up to a 58 inch bust with a suggested ease of two to four inches of positive ease. So another fun cardigan that I think would be great to use up a lot of your scraps. The next cardigan that I wanted to include is the Live Rest cardigan and this is by Espresso Trico. And the reason I wanted to include this one is because maybe you want a striped cardigan but the fisherman's rib of the Straya is a little scary for you. And so this is a cardigan that I think will fit the bill for that. You still get your stripes and there's no fisherman's rib involved. And so this one is slightly different because this one is a circular yoke construction as opposed to the um, raglan construction of the Straya. But again, you are getting, oh, I think this one looks like it only has three color stripes instead of four. So, but you're still getting that striped cardigan feel and um, just a very relaxed looking cardigan. And so I believe that this cardigan was published in a book and this one is using worsted weight. So it is a little bit of a thicker weight, but this is good. Like if you ever have um, a large kind of, um, you know, worsted weight project and you have leftovers, either a single skein or most of a skein, I think that you would be able to easily use up your scraps in this one. 
And so the gauge is 22 stitches uh, to four inches. You're using a size US four needle and it is available in finish sizes from 37 and three quarters all the way up to 73 inches. And so the, let's see, here we go. The definition here or the, 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 the description. <laughs> Here is the Liveress cardigan combines some of our favorite elements of mid-century knitwear, tidy crew neck, rustic yarn, whimsical buttons with a timeless silhouette and playful color palette. And so, yeah, it looks like for the contrasting colors, you're really only using at the most 119 yards of any one of the contrasting colors. So I think it's perfect to use for all of your worsted weight scraps. So this next cardigan that I have to share with you all is the Coffee House Cardi by Alicia Plummer. And it is a more recent design. And I debated whether or not to include this one because technically you can't really use your scraps for the contrasting color. However, I think that a lot of us may have lonely skeins. As you all know, my friend Haley of The Knit Weekend is hosting the Lonely Skeins project this year. Or if you do have, you know, the majority of, let's say, a DK weight um, skein left over, you will be able to get away with one skein for, I believe, the first six sizes of this cardigan. So ultimately, I did decide to include it here. And so again, this is the Coffee House Cardi by Alicia Plummer. And it is a unisex design. And I love that it just has, you know, it's kind of your, your classic cardigan, but it just features this little bit extra with that, um, you know, very stunning, very bold color work motif across the middle of the cardigan. And yeah, it's just a very, very stunning. So going into the description of the cardigan, it is available for nine US dollars. And again, it was uh, designed a uh, DK weight yarn at a 20 stitches to four inch gauge on US seven needles. And so this is available from size 36 inches all the way up to 72 inches. And again, it is a unisex um, pattern. And so let's see, the sweater is worked from the top down, flat to start, and then joined in the round at the front, then neckline shaping is completed. The sweater is then worked seamlessly in the round to the hem, which is worked flat, and then the sweater is steeped. So again, you're not having to knit the color work band flat. You knit it all um, in the round, and then you get to steep it, and uh, which I always think just makes things a little bit more mindless too because there's no purling. So again, the finished bust sizes are gonna be 36 to 72 inches. It is meant to be worn with four to six inches of positive ease. And here's where I'm uh, mentioning that you can use sort of a single skein of DK weight. Um, if for the smaller size ranges, you would need a second one for the larger size ranges. Um, but you could get away with one skein of DK weight for one, two, three, four, five, the first six sizes. So where the contrasting color goes up to 240. Typically, DK weight yarn is going to be 240 to 100 grams. So um, that will give you kind of, you know, if you have that lonely skein hanging out in your stash or you have the majority of a skein and you fit into one of the smaller sizes, or even in my case, actually, I think I have like one and a half skeins of a DK weight where I had purchased for a sweater. Um, actually, my citrine jumper, I have one and a half skeins left. Um, um, so that would be, you know, kind of a perfect way to use that when you end up with all of this extra DK weight in your stash. So finally, I want to get to the cardigan that I plan on knitting this spring. And it is the Cardi Jumper by Inez of Vernit. 
And um, pulling this up, you can all see this is a very simple um, cardigan. And the reason why it's called the Cardi Jumper is because you can wear it both as a cardigan and also as a jumper as displayed here being worn backwards by Inez. And this is the particular um, version of the cardigan that I plan on knitting, which is the striped version, because I have some yarn in stash that I'm going to show you all that I plan on using for this jumper or the Cardi jumper, I should say. So scrolling down, it is um, available for 9.45 euros. Um, it is knit using sport weight yarn. I believe it was originally um, using like a fingering with a silk mohair. So that's why it's classified as sport weight. However, the gauge is 24 stitches to four inches, which for me is definitely a fingering weight gauge. I cannot I would not be able to knit a sport weight at a 24 stitch gauge personally. The fabric would be too dense. I would have to go down too many needle sizes um, because I am quite a loose knitter. So I will be using fingering weight yarn for mine. Um, and the recommended needle size is a US 4. It is available from 30 to 62 inch finish bust. And this is one that was recently re-released, um, you know, to make it size inclusive and to fit a little bit better across the various sizes. And I know that I have a few friends um, that even were able to test this. Um, Hannah of um, Hannah G Knits comes to mind that tested this beautiful cardigan. And so the Cardi Jumper is a versatile wardrobe staple that can be worn as a v-neck cardigan or a boat neck jumper. It has a modern cut with drop down shoulders and an oversized fit. So it is meant to be worn with about six to eight inches of positive ease around the bust. And it's very polished with a delicate shoulder seam and well-proportioned cuffs, etc. So, um, yeah, so with that, I'm going to show you all the yarn that I plan on using for my Cardi Jumper. And so, for my Cardi Jumper, we are continuing the cones <laughs> and working through my woolly knit cones specifically. And so, as I mentioned, I have a couple of woolly knit cones. I used the white um, or the off-white for this one. I recently used this black for my April cardigan, which you all will see in the next podcast episode. Um, and so I actually have about 100 grams left of both the black and the beige in my stash. And then I have this big old cone of woolly knit four ply in the color harvest. So I'll bring that up to you all. This is not a good corner to show off colors. So, um, but this is the easiest corner for me to set up today. It's a Friday afternoon after work. So here we are. But um, yeah, oh, that's actually pretty good. So I knew that I wanted to use this cone for the cardigan and I knew that I wanted to make a striped version of the cardigan and so I was going back and forth as to whether I would use the white or the black and I think both would be great and beautiful but I just think that personally the black will give it a little bit more versatility especially when thinking through wearing it in the darker months so in the fall and the winter where I think the white will give it more of like a spring summer feel and so that is what I'm going to be knitting my cardi jumper in now I do have a few knits that I have going on right now so this one isn't going to be started quite right away but um I do plan on starting it pretty soon and that'll probably be go my ongoing spring into summer cardigan um, because I did knit my April cardigan in about two weeks um, but uh, because at this point we are warming up there's really no rush for me to finish an entire cardigan in that amount of time so um, yeah this will be a little bit of a longer term project for me. So the next card, uh, 
The next category, not cardigan, <laughs> of items that I think are great for stash busting this spring are, of course, accessories. And so again, I'm going to mention my friend Haley's Lonely Skein Project um, make-along that she is hosting all the way through September. So some of these will end up making their way into that um, make-along in terms of my submissions. And so some of these are going to require a little bit more yardage so a full skein so if you have those lonely skeins in your stash and some of them will not require as much yardage so truly scrappy projects and so the first one that I want to start with and um, I have one of them pulled up here but I'm going to mention both projects it is the school run headband and mitts by Laura Penrose of Laura Penrose Knits and so I just think that these are super cute and so I'm going to highlight the first picture because this is where she is wearing both the headband and the mitts and so if you're like me um, and the second it starts to rain, I wear my hair natural because I can't be bothered with straightening my hair and then having it be a frizz ball because it gets wet. Um, sometimes I still need to warm up my ears in the spring because like I mentioned, the days will start out cold and then get warmer. And a headband is the perfect way to kind of solve for that in my opinion. Um, uh, also helps keep your hair like a little bit, uh, better controlled. And then because it's a small I item, you can just stick it in your purse or in your pocket or whatever it may be. And then of course, you know, same thing with the hands. You don't, don't need full gloves anymore, but you definitely need something to warm up your hands. So again, I'm pulling up the headband pattern here, but I have saved both the headband and the mitts pattern to the Ravelry um, bundle. And so for the headband, it is a paid for pattern, three GBP, and it is knit in DK weight. Um, if I remember correctly, the mitts are in fingering weight, which is perfect for those scrappy projects. And so the gauge is 19 stitches um, to four inches, and the yardage is between 69 to 413 yards because this pattern is actually sized from a baby all the way to three adult sizes, which is really great. So you can buy this pattern and um, knit it up for everyone in your family. So um, the description says, born from a need to keep ears warm whilst my hair was stirred up in a messy bun, the school run headband is perfect for keeping cozy when you're running late. Available in sizes for the whole family, you can also twin with your little one. So I think that this would be a great addition to your pattern library for a quick accessory to knit or two quick accessories if you knit the mitts as well to knit this spring. The next one that I wanted to feature is perfect for those lonely skeins of sock yarn that we all pick up when we're on vacation. And it is the Lone Skein Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. And this is what it looks like here. And it is a crescent shaped shawl and it's specifically designed to only use one skein of fingering weight yarn. So I believe that should be about 400 yards and you can even maximize the usage so you have zero yarn left by adding in the tassels. And so this pattern is a paid for pattern available for six USD. And again, it is knit up in a fingering weight yarn at a large gauge. So it's a nice large gauge, 14 stitches to four inches. And the yardage is 440 yards on a US seven needles. So it is intended, it's just one size. It's intended to be one size fits all. And it is approximately 80 inches from one end to the other and 15 inches deep after blocking. And so let's see, the description here says, the one skein shawl is such a pretty thing to make. 
They are always worthy of our finest treasured yarns. They yield almost instant gratification and they are truly the most fun accessories to spice up your daily wardrobe. The simple crescent shaped shawl can be made with just one skein of fingering sock weight yarn. It alternates bands of slip stitches, garter stitches, and short rows. The crescent is asymmetrical. It's longer toward one side and it's cat and its characteristic shape is achievable by working increases over the edges. So this is another great one because it looks like you also are not purling, which is nice. So it is nice, it just simple garter stitch and then maybe you need to pay attention in a couple rows. So definitely perfect for your TV knitting this spring. Next step, I think it, I would be remiss in putting out a accessories based uh, video or a video with accessories without mentioning a tin can pattern. But this is the anthology and this is for a cowl and hot hat, not hot. <laughs> set by Tin Can Knits and this is a free pattern which is great and so this is a recipe whereby you can sort of choose various color work motifs to make either a hat or a cowl and the reason I'm including this in here is because although it looks like the first few items are hats I think that in the spring cowls are perfect for this type of weather. Again, it's something that you can just throw on over your head and then if you get too hot, you can easily pop it off and it's small so that you're not carrying around a big bulky accessory. So again, it is a free pattern and like many of their free patterns, it is available in any gauge. So this is the pattern that you are going to use all of your scraps, whatever they might be, in your stash to make this cowl. Um, and so, yeah, so depending on your gauge, of course, is going to depend on your yardage, but you can um, make it in any size. And again, like all of their patterns, is size for the entire family. So another great way to use up a lot of your scraps this spring. Okay, it wouldn't be a podcast episode if I didn't have to take a brief break for a battery change. <laughs> so hopefully we're in the same-ish position. Um, and we can keep going with our next accessory to knit the spring. So keeping with the theme of how to keep my unruly hair tamed in the spring, I pulled up this pattern because I think this is the perfect pattern to kind of pull your hair out of your face if you're getting down in the dirt and in the garden this spring, getting ready for all of our plenty goodness. And it is the Romanticist's Bandana. And um, I think... Her Instagram handle is Mare Bear Maid. Um, I should probably, we'll, we'll find out the designer's name as well. I believe her name is Meredith. And um, yeah, I recall seeing this pattern when it came out. I believe it was spring last year. And I just thought it was such a cute little pattern. And it is one of those that is both very utilitarian, but also, um, you know, just a great little statement piece. So this is just a cute little eyelet bandana. And I think that, yeah, you could really just use it to spice up your wardrobe and use it not only to keep your hair out of your face, but also as the weather then turns warmer, it can also be used to protect your head from the sun if you're like me and have dark hair, which means that the top of my head gets very hot in the summer. And so this uh, this pattern is available for three twenty nine US dollars, um, and let's see, it is meant to be used uh, DK weight yarn. The gauge is twenty two stitches to four inches on US five needles, and here we go. So it is. The description is the Romanticist Bandana is a quick stash busting project for anyone looking to add a little bit of whimsy to their accessory wardrobe. It's constructed by casting on at the point of the bandana and increasing on either side while simultaneously working a delicate diamond repeat until a desired width is established. 
So yeah, you can pretty much just keep going until you use up all of your yarn or until you get your, um, your width that you'd like. And it looks like it uses just about, um, 125 meters or so. Um, I can't do the yardage conversion in my head of yarn. So totally able to use this as a scrap busting project. And um, yes, the designer's name is Meredith Campbell. I apologize for that. Uh, but I believe that her Instagram handle is Mare Bear Maid, if I do recall correctly. So in terms of the project that I will be working up this spring, it is the Small Fry Scarf by Samantha Guerin. And so if you've caught my last podcast, you will have seen my test knit that I knit for Sam of this project. And again, this is one that depending on the yardage of the yarn can be a lonely skein project. Otherwise, you may need a little bit of a second skein um, if you have have some extra yardage in your stash. So again, if you have one of those situations where you have like one and a half skeins in your in your stash, you could definitely knit this one up. And so I have featured this one on the podcast before, but it is a nice tiny scarf, although this one is a little bit more hefty than your traditional tiny scarf, in my opinion. Also, the way that you can um, kind of work to maximize your yardage if you wanted to is as you knit it along, you could weigh your yarn and kind of just work half of the scarf when you used up half of your yarn and then work the other half of the scarf once, you know, with the rest of the yarn. And that's a way to ensure that you're using up an entire skein if you didn't want to necessarily have a second one. And so the pattern is available for eight US dollars. It is a sport weight pattern. The gauge is 27 stitches in the textured um, pattern, which is a garter and slip stitch pattern. So there is no purling in here. And it is knit using US three needles or 3.25 millimeter needles. And here we have our description. Sometimes you need a little something. Simple and sophisticated, the small fry scarf is a quick knit and the perfect way to add a bit of hand knit flair to your outfit. So that is what I'm going to be knitting this spring. And I have mine right here to show you all. And I am foraying into red. And every time I, I hold this up, it looks so neon, but, um, it's definitely very red in person, but it's not as neon as it appears on camera. And so as you all can see, I've actually finished half of my scarf already. So I'm really excited to add a little pop of color into my wardrobe this spring. So the third category of items that I think are perfect for your spring knitting and perfect for stash busting in general are homewares. And I think that this is one that we as knitters and crocheters are all very familiar with. You can pretty much make most things for your home and use it as a stash busting project. And so I did want to share a few patterns with you today. So the first pattern that I want to show you today is the Sweet Shop Blanket by Laura Penrose. And so this is kind of the pattern that took um, the knitting community by storm this past winter. And, you know, for obvious reasons, it is a stunning, stunning pattern. And it has very clever construction and you can use this to knit up all of your fingering weight and DK weight um, scraps that you have in your stash. And so in terms of the pattern, it is available for purchase for six GBP. It is a DK weight pattern. So again, you could use your DK weight stash or your fingering weight held double to create a DK weight. 
The gauge is 23 stitches to 4 inches, and you're using a US 6 needle. And again, you know, I kind of use scrappy loosely in this con in this concept because you do need to have significant amount of the main color. However, you would be able to use all of your scraps for all of the contrasting colors within the blanket. And so let's see. There are four sizes available. So you have the baby pet size, the lap square, the lap rectangle, and the throw. And it is an intermediate pattern. Um, and yeah, it's worked flat. And the nice thing about this construction is that there is no seaming. So you essentially add on each square to the next one and you do not have to seam at all. And so at the end of it, you just keep adding on. And then when you're done adding on, you're done and you're, you have a blanket. There's no seaming. You do have to weave in ends, <laughs> but there's no seaming necessary for this project. So in that same vein, I bring you the Zigzag Zen Blanket. And this is one that's just a little bit more simple, but it is one that, again, you would need a you know, significant amount of the main color. However, all of the contrasting colors, you can use your scraps or you could just use your scraps for the whole thing if you didn't want to have a cohesive color. Same thing with the Sweet Shop Blanket. Um, but this pattern is by Anina Juti. And this is another one where you kind of just add on as you go. So again, another nice mindless knit. And this one's just a little bit le more mindless, a little less difficult than the Sweet Shop Blanket because you are just working in rectangles the entire time. And so, yeah, I mean, this is a super lovely pattern. It looks stunning. Again, you can use all of those fingering weight and DK scraps that you have in your stash. So again, it is, let's see, sorry, scrolled by the price point. It is available for purchase for 650 euros and it is a DK weight blanket. So again, you can use either DK weight held single or fingering weight held double. The gauge is 17 stitches to four inches and you are knitting it on a US eight. It is available in two sizes and the description is the zigzag Zen is a fun stripy garter blanket constructed from the corner out. It has alternating horizontal and vertical stripes and with different color combinations, your choices are endless. So I think that this is another pattern that would be perfect just to have on the go and um, use up all of your various scraps in your stash. And so this is a, another pattern that is once again, <laughs> designed for kind of your scraps. So again, kind of like those advents or those scraps that you might have left over. And it is the Northeasterly by Skeenanigans. And this one is kind of a little bit of a different take on that kind of stripy blanket, which I thought was absolutely cute like it's so cute and adorable but essentially you're creating these ribbons of um kind of arrows just going in one direction and you are just you know kind of is this not scrolling by okay here we go and you're just adding colors as you may you can make it striped if you want um this one's really stunning you can you know really play with color here depending on how you want your blanket to look. And again, this is one of those that can be just a long-term scrappy project, especially if you do tend to have a cohesive color palette. It is a purchase pattern, so it's available for five US dollars. And this one is using fingering weight. However, I believe it's held double, no. Um, we are using fingering weight. The gauge is nine stitches to one inch. Um, and yeah, on US two needles and the size is customizable because you pretty much just knit until you feel like not knitting anymore. 
So the description is a new take on a sock yarn blanket with a fun modern look and the ability to use as much or as little of your fingering and DK weight mini skeins and scraps. This modular design requires minimal finishing, which makes it a perfect project to pick up and put down as you like. So another really great project to work up this spring. So I would be remiss if I mentioned scrappy blankets and I didn't include a granny stripe blanket for you all. And this is one that you all, if you've been here for a while, know that I am working on. I will not be able to show you mine because it is still unfortunately packed away, um, but you can definitely head on over to the Ravelry Project page below to see how I'm working mine up. But this is the Woodland Rimple Woodland Ripple Blanket. And so this is what it looks like. And so this is one of those blankets that technically I think it's um, knit up in like a worsted weight, but you can really use any weight. I'm using fingering weight. I kind of just figured out my gauge and I'm working from there. And it is nice because it is a free pattern. And so the gauge for this one, it is using DK weight yarn. So it is DK weight yarn. Um, however, if you're like me, you can use fingering weight and just kind of make your own gauge. Uh, but it is written for DK weight with 34 stitches equaling six and three quarter inches in the pattern. And this is one of those that it does have multiple sizes available, but really, again, um, the way that the pattern works is you pretty much just, um, you pretty much just calculate your gauge and figure out how large you want the pattern to be. Um, the designer walks you through that on the pattern page and then you can, you know, from your gauge and figuring out how you, large you want the pattern to be, you kind of just go. And so for my particular one, I am using my advent yarn where each stripe is a different color from my various advents that I have purchased over the last two years. And so the fifth and last pattern that I want to share with you all in the homeware section is the pattern that I am planning on working on this spring. Because as I mentioned, even though I am working on the Woodland Rimple, Woodland Ripple Blanket, that is a winter pattern for me. I do knit it or I do crochet it using my advents. Um, but I am working on the Stella Quilt Cushion again by Laura, Laura Penrose of Penrose Knits. And this is just an absolutely stunning, stunning pattern. Um, this is one that I think you all will probably have seen. There are tons of people that tested this. There are tons of different versions of this, um, pattern and it is just a lovely, lovely design. Again, Laura created a kind of, as you can see by this picture, a seamless square. So each square builds up upon the next one so that you're not seaming any of these squares together. And it is specifically designed to use your minis. So again, a scrappy, scrappy project. So this one is again available for purchase for five GBP and it is either DK weight and it also, there also is an Aran weight version within the pattern as well. So you get two different sizes available. The gauge is 18 stitches to four inches in the garter stitch, and you are using either a size six needle for the DK weight or size eight needle for the Aran weight. And here we go. Depending on which motif you use, you can, or you make, you can use various scraps um, that you might have in your stash because it was originally designed to be an advent project. And let's see. So the construction, the front of the cover is worked first with each square being added to the previous by picking up stitches and or work, working German short rows. The back is then added in the same manner with the final seam being sewn closed with a mattress stitch or a closure flap is added. The entire cover is worked flat. And so this is the project that I'm going to be working up for my 
spring homewares, if you will, um, that is a scrappy project. So if you have watched my last podcast episode, you will have already seen this, but I will show you again. I have completely finished the front of the cushion. And so this is what it looks like. And so this yarn, all of the yarn that I used for this is leftovers from other projects. I won't go into details because it will take me a very long time. But again, you can check out last month's podcast if you want to know the details of all of the yarn that I'm using here. And technically, even my main color is a scrap because it is half of a cone that I used um, for another project. I used half of a cone. I still had the other half left over. So even my main color is technically scraps. So this is a 100% scrappy project for me and getting tons of yarn out of my stash, which I am really excited about. So I hope that you enjoyed this take two at the three projects that you should knit this spring, the scrappy edition, if you will. I know not all of the projects were 100% scrappy, but again, these are all projects that you can create using either your scraps or your lonely skeins in your stash because we all have them. And this is just a great way for you to use up some yarn this spring. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to do all of the podcasty things. Give the video a like. If you're not already subscribed, please do so and click that bell icon so you're notified every single time I post a video. There are a few different ways that you can help support the channel in the description below. However, just liking this video is plenty. So please, please, please give it a like so that others like you can see my content. And with that, I will leave you until the next episode. Um, my next episode will be a vlog. So I know not a lot of folks are into the vlogs, but I did feel a little bit of a travel vlog when we took a recent trip so that will be coming up next Sunday after you're seeing this and then I will be back for my regular monthly podcast episode on May 5th so as always I post on Sundays 9 a.m eastern time so whichever video I see you next I hope that you're taking care of yourselves your loved ones and each other and I will see you then bye